Uh, Kevin, what, what did Tech do to make it a tough shooting day for you guys? Well, I, I thought we had some really open shots. It was a moment, um, Mark, at the beginning of the game. I mean, at the beginning of the second half, where I thought we played tremendous defense. Uh, I think Virginia Tech started the second half missing their first 10 out of 11 shots. Um, and I didn't think we took advantage of it. You know, we came out um, uh, do that four-minute segment after the first half. I thought we had a lead one day we won the second half. Unfortunate thing, they wasn't playing well, and we didn't make shots. Um, um, and, and you look at it, some of it was because some of the, the wrong guys got the shots. Um, uh, we didn't finish well. I, I thought we played. It was a great game back and forth. And then when you look at it, I thought we missed some shots down the stretch, and then obviously uh, they were able to break the game open. What uh, went right those first two and a half, three minutes, and then what changed and what went wrong after that? Well, we played, we made shots. Um, and when you look at us, uh, it's, it's going to be hard for us to beat anybody uh, when we're six from 30. And, you know, we tip, we typically don't take 30 shot, 33 pointers, and we didn't make them tonight. Um, you know, we, even our shooters, our, the guys who are normally making three point shots, didn't make many of them. Pat was two for six. Uh, when you look at Braxton Beverly, uh, he was one for six. And I think Markel Johnson was one for seven. And so if we're making six three-pointers and we're taking 30, that's not a good formula for us to be successful. Was that a, f a product of their defense giving you those, or did you guys just not do what you needed to do offensively? No, it's definitely their defense. We came in the game because uh, they do a really good job of protecting the paint. Um, they play a similar uh, defense as pack line. When you drive, everybody converges, and you're going to get those shots, and we didn't make them. We just didn't. We, uh, you know, I thought we had some good looks, some great looks, and they just didn't go down for us. With CJ warming up before the game and then warming up even at halftime, how close was he to playing in this game? He wasn't playing. It's a it's a protocol that we have to go through. Um, he's cleared for light contact. He's play, he's cleared to work out. Uh, we let him warm up today because this was one of the days that if he if he works out the next couple of days and he feels good about it, he has a chance to play on Wednesday. Um, and so because we're going to be off as a team tomorrow, we didn't want to waste a day where we could our doctors could look at him and say he looks good. He he went through uh, shoot around. He went through. We worked him out yesterday and he went through um, practice yesterday and felt good. Uh, didn't feel so great last night and so obviously the doctors decided to shut him down. How much of his scoring and specifically that mid range game? Um, from him is, is missing from this game in particular? Yeah, I just think we're missing another guard. Um, and he's a good player. Um, you know, I, you know I, I try not to make any excuses about it, but, you know, it's not many teams that can be able to afford to lose their leading scorer and leader rebounder and be successful. Uh, we were against Notre Dame at home, but the other against Clemson. And, and here, uh, we could have used one more guy to be able to score the basketball for us, and we didn't have that. Uh, that being said, you know, we had a great opportunity for some other guys to step up, and we just didn't make shots. Thoughts on Braxton Beverly, the impact his foul trouble had on the team? Yeah, he's got to be better. Uh, he and I talked about it. Um, you know, that, you know, I, I thought his third and fourth fouls, were, were, which were fouls, I thought he could have avoided them. You know, the guy drove baseline, he gets his third one. We're late on a switch, and then he fouls him on. He fouls a three-point shooter. Uh, with a short bench like we have, especially in our guard rotation, we can't afford to have anybody in foul trouble. And those times that he was off the floor kind of hurt us. Um, you know, I, I've been able to play him at some point guard position, you know, throughout the game and take Markel off the ball to give him some breaks. And we weren't able to do that because I couldn't have him on the floor. Markel took a step forward against Notre Dame. Today, five turnovers, I believe one for seven, like you said, from three. What do you do to, to get him consistent? Yeah, he, just, he didn't have a good game. Uh, you know, we, we're just, we'll get back in the gym and uh, we'll work on some things. And, um, you know, he knows that. One of the things that he and I have talked about is just being consistent. And, and he had an off night. Um, you know, I don't know if that has anything to do with um, Virginia Tech defense, but he didn't, he didn't have a great night. But that being said, um, most of our guys did. So, uh, Markel's not to blame. If you want to blame anybody, blame me because um, obviously our guys didn't shoot the ball well. That's what about uh, Landers Nolly and, and Tyrese Radford gave your, your defense trouble today? I thought I thought uh, Nolly was tremendous. Uh, I mean, he played great. You know, he, he was he made shots. He got to the free throw line. You know, he finished around the rim. I thought he was good. And any other young man, he just does. He plays his role. He does a tremendous job cutting off the basketball. There's nothing special about his game, and that's not talking about him. He just understands he's a great team player. Um, understands how to play. He's a slasher. He gets to the rim. He did a great job. Does 
CJ's absence temper your frustration? Meaning, if you know what you have when you have all your pieces and you're waiting for that to happen. Because it feels like maybe from the outside, the frustration level might be here. Yeah. And I'm not saying you aren't, yeah. but it feels like you're tempering yours. Yeah, I, I don't, you know, Joe, I, I try to, I never listen to outside noise. Uh, your question is very valid. Um, I understand who we are right now. Um, I understand that we don't have uh, all of our pieces. Uh, that being said, I don't want to discredit the guys in the program, so I never really hop on the fact that we don't have C.J. Bryce. Uh, if the outside is a little frustrated, then they should also be able to take a look around college basketball and say, if you don't have your best player, then you're probably going to struggle. Um, so I'll take the good with the bad. Uh, I haven't made a lot about it because uh, – I, I want other guys to have the opportunity and don't feel like that I'm saying we got to have a guy. Uh, but we miss him. Um, we miss. We would miss any of our three, four guards if any of those guys were out for uh, several games. So in my, my position, uh, I'm frustrated because I'm a competitor. Uh, my frustration didn't come from the fact that we didn't have C.J. Bryce. I just thought when we needed to be tougher at the end of the game, we wasn't, and that was more of a mental side of it. Thanks, Coach.